Hi, I'm Jim Phelps with psycheducation.org. This video describes dark therapy, a non-pill treatment to reduce and prevent hypomanic and manic shifts and stabilize mood. I'm not selling anything or making any money here, just describing a treatment you might find useful. Welcome. Here are four important things to know about dark therapy. It's an anti-manic, that's clear, and we think it's probably also a mood stabilizer, but we need more research on that. Most people don't get enough of it, but you can cheat. You can use virtual darkness, we'll show you. And this technique works in the hospital very well. Here's an example of dark therapy. This graph shows three years of the mood course of one research participant. As you can see, things were really rough, up and down into manic and depressed phases until a new treatment was begun right there at the blue marker. Notice that this man's mood quickly became more stable. The new treatment was dark therapy, no new medications at this point. The new treatment was simply a dark room with a bed, no lights, no electronics. At first, at the asterisk, he stayed in that room for 14 hours per night from 6 p.m. until 8 a.m. But within a few weeks, that was reduced to 10 hours per night from 10 p.m. until 8 a.m. And as you can see, things stayed stable. But you might be thinking, well, that's great, but I can't do that. I can't spend all that time in the dark. I have to take care of my kids. I have to do my homework, prepare for work the next day. No lights, no electronics. Well, you can cheat. You can use virtual darkness and still do most of your evening activities. Here's how that works. When light enters your eye, it sends a signal to your brain, wake up. But in the dark, that signal is gone. And if it's the right time of day, your brain can go to sleep. Well, it turns out that only one kind of light, blue light, sends that wake up signal to the brain. So if you block it, letting all the other colors through, your brain thinks you're in the dark, it can go to sleep as if it were in a truly dark room. And how do you block blue light? With these amber colored lenses, blue blockers. This is such an important idea. Allow me to show you the results of an experiment that demonstrates this effect. In a sleep research program, participants had their melatonin measured overnight. Melatonin is a hormone that is associated with sleep, and it's a good marker of whether your brain thinks it's daytime or nighttime, as you'll see. Here's what happens to melatonin overnight in a sleep lab where they turn out the lights at 2100, 9 p.m. Melatonin goes up quickly, stays up for several hours, and then slowly comes back down just before the lights went on at 7 a.m. But when the same research participants came back several days later and the lights were left on all night, look what happens to melatonin levels. Melatonin never really goes up at all because light suppresses melatonin production. But remember those blue blockers? What happens if we bring the same people back to the sleep lab a week later and again leave the lights on all night but give them amber lenses to wear? Bingo! their melatonin levels go up just as though they were in the dark. This result is what got us thinking. Maybe blue blockers could be used to provide virtual darkness for people with bipolar disorders. They could stay up, take care of the kids, do their homework, get ready for work the next day, and be in the dark. Well, their brain would think it was dark in the absence of blue light. Well, that's a nice idea, but does it really work? That's where Dr. Henriksen and her research team came in. They did the research study we really needed. Here's what they did. On a psychiatric hospital inpatient unit, they invited people who were admitted in a manic phase to participate in a study wearing amber lenses or a gray lens that did not block blue light. The glasses were worn from 6 p.m. until the lights went out and then they had real darkness until the following morning. Otherwise, everyone received the usual treatments for bipolar manic symptoms. The research team checked everyone's manic symptoms using a standard measure, the Young Mania Rating Scale, the YMRS. 
Remember, everyone is getting all the usual treatments for bipolar mania. So you'd expect the YMRS scores to go down slowly over the first week, and they did in the group wearing the gray lenses at night. But in the group wearing the blue blockers, manic symptoms went down much faster among the people wearing the blue blockers at night. They slept better and they needed fewer medications to get these results. Only half as much antipsychotic medication, for example. Well, that study was published in 2016. You can see why we want to get the word out about it. And this is the second research study showing an anti-manic effect of darkness. We don't have such a great study of blue blockers as a mood stabilizer, but that's exactly what happened for this man, it looks like. And in a recent study, getting hypomanic or manic was twice as likely among people whose bedroom was not really dark. That also suggests that regular darkness is a mood stabilizer. It prevents shifts, at least toward mania. And that new study also suggests that to really do dark therapy, you need a really dark bedroom. So use very effective curtains or even tinfoil the windows if you have to. And if that makes it too dark, get some amber nightlights. There are several inexpensive versions. If you get your bedroom really dark, you may need a dawn simulator to help you wake up on schedule in the morning. These bedside lights slowly increase from zero to full intensity light over about 20 or 30 minutes, simulating dawn. They're inexpensive. This one's about $40. There are even some apps that make your phone light up slowly in the morning, but they're not very bright. On the other hand, as best we know, like all dawn simulators, they're harmless unless your bed partner is on a different schedule. In summary, to get the full anti-manic effects of dark therapy, you'd want to shoot for about 14 hours of darkness, four of them virtual using amber lenses, and 10 hours in real darkness. For a mood stabilizer effect, the target is more like 10 hours of darkness, two of them virtual and eight of them real. Don't use them during the day. That would be sending the wrong signal to your brain, darkness. And then one more caution. One patient in Dr. Hendrickson's study of mania became quickly depressed as though the lenses worked too well. They were too anti-manic, but he recovered within days when his blue blockers were stopped. So if you have a treatment team or at least a single provider you're working with, don't do dark therapy on your own. Talk about it with them. At least virtual darkness is inexpensive. Be careful, not all models block enough blue light. And just using those computer programs that decrease the blue color from the screen, good idea, but they don't remove enough blue either. And lastly, there's an alternative. You can just get amber bulbs for all the lights that you use late at night. So here's that summary again. To get the full anti-manic effects of dark therapy, shoot for 14 hours of darkness, four of them virtual using amber lenses, and 10 hours in real darkness. For a mood stabilizer effect, the target is more like 10 hours of darkness, two of them virtual and eight of them real. Thanks for listening.